Okay, so in this next video, what we want to do is um, show how we can convert a pseudo metric space into a metric space. Now, if you've done, uh, if you've studied group theory, uh, what we're going to do is quite analogous to uh, the way in which you construct quotient groups from groups. So uh, the idea is that uh, you define an equivalence relation on a group, on the elements of a group and then you define a new group um, composition law on the equivalence classes. So you take the set of equivalence classes which partition up your group and you define a new um, multiplication law or composition, whatever you want to call it, uh, law on those equivalence classes and you, and, you use the equi and you use the multiplication law, the group multiplication law on the, um, on the original group in order to define how you're going to do it on the equivalence classes. Well, basically, what we're going to do is define some equivalence classes on our pseudo-metric space and define a metric on our... Um, uh, sorry, define a metric on our equivalence classes, on our set of equivalence classes, and then what we will do is that we will base that metric on the pseudo-metric structure of our original, um, our original space. So if you haven't seen group theory, don't worry, I'll do my best to explain it completely. Uh, and it will be a, um, it will be a good sort of, it'll be a good, um, a good, a bit of, a good technique to see uh, for when you do study abstract algebra, because it's used all the time in abstract algebra. So let's say x bar d bar is a pseudo-metric space, so is a pseudo-metric space, and I don't know if that's, um, that, I, that is not sort of common uh, notation, I'm just putting the bars there uh, to denote that it's a pseudo-metric space and not a normal metric space, uh, but it's not common notation. Okay, so is a pseudo-metric space. So x bar d bar is a pseudo-metric space, and what we want to do is we want to now uh, define an equivalence relation. So I'm going to define an equivalence relation on this set x bar. So here we have our set x bar, and I want to partition the set up, and I want to show you that this is an equivalence relation. So I want, um, if we take two little elements, little x and little y in here, I want little x to be related to little y if, if, um, the distance between little x and little y is equal to zero. So basically, uh, I want uh, x to be related to y if the distance, but oh sorry, if the d bar, of course, uh, d bar is our pseudo metric. If the pseudo metric bet uh, distance between x and y is equal to zero. Okay, so I'm going to put all the all of these uh, elements which are distance. Uh, apart from each other, zero into the same equivalence class, basically. And so I firstly need to prove that this is valid, uh, that this does define an equivalence relation, and therefore that these equivalence classes are disjoint and are going to um, cover the um, set and form a nice partition. Okay, so first axiom was that uh, x is related to x. Well, quite clearly, uh, d bar of x and x is equal to zero. That's one of the axioms of a pseudo-metric space. So that implies, because this is true, uh, that implies that x indeed is related to x. So reflexivity holds of this equivalence relation. Two, we want symmetry. If x is related to y, then we want that to imply that y is related to x. Well, if x is related to y, that implies that the distance between x and y, it, sorry, the pseudo-metric difference, distance between x and y is equal to zero, which implies by symmetry of the metric, of the pseudo-metric, that the distance between y and x is equal to zero, and this then implies that y is related to x. So we've got symmetry then. Okay, and the third property is transitivity. So we want to show that if x is related to y uh, and y is related to z, that that implies uh, that x is related to z. That's what we want to show. So if x is related to y, that implies that the distance between x and y is equal to zero. If y is related to z, then that implies that the distance between y and z is equal to zero. Now this is calling on us to use the triangle inequality. So the distance between x and z these two things are going to imply, along with the triangle inequality, that this is less than or equal. So just the triangle inequality now. Uh, sorry, these we're not using these two things yet. We're just using the triangle inequality. The distance between x and z is less than or equal to the distance between x and y plus the distance between y and z. That's true whatever. That's just the axioms of pseudo-metric space. Now we plug in this information here. So along with the triangle inequality and all of this, we get that the distance between x and z is less than or equal to 0 plus 0, which is less than or equal to 0. 
Now what we do is we just apply axiom one of a pseudo metric space along with the th this, along with the fact that uh, what's the other? What's axiom one? That distance between any two elements is non-negative is an element of zero to infinity. This implies uh, that the distance between x and z is equal to zero, which implies that x is related to z. So there we have we have transitivity, and now we know uh, that um, that our search that this is that this is going to work. Basically, that what we can do is split this metric this pseudo metric space up into equivalence classes. We can put together all the things um, which are a distance from each uh, a distance away from each other zero so every element in this equivalence class of x will be a distance away from x equal to zero so let's say x bar over here uh, as you know I won't say x bar say x prime x prime over here is going to be a distance from x equal to zero so d bar of x prime and x is going to be equal to zero and in fact um, x prime is going to be a distance zero from all of the points in this equivalence class because remember x prime's equivalence class is going to be the same as x's equivalence class uh, because of these axioms of the equivalence relation down here. Uh, so this forms a very nice partition of the set where I've put into where I group all of the elements that are a distance away from each other equal to zero. And if um, if an element is a distance away from x equal to zero. So if x prime is a distance from x equal to zero, and uh, another element x double prime is a distance x, a distance zero from uh, away from x, and uh, then that implies that the distance between x prime and x double prime is also equal to zero by transitivity, which we've just shown is true uh, and comes from the triangle inequality. So basically, this is uh, these are the these are the um, sets. Uh, of all elements that are a distance zero away from each other. So every element in here, pick any two elements of each, any of, so pick an equivalence class and pick any two elements in that equivalence class, they'll be distance zero from one another. So this forms a nice partition, a nice uh, partition of x bar. And now what I want to do is I want to call each, give each of these equivalence classes a name. So pick a representative from each of them. So each of these might contain more than one element. Some of them might just contain one element. So we might have a set up here that just contains a single element, i.e. there are no other elements in the entire pseudo-metric space which are a distance zero from it other than itself. Uh, so some of them will be in on their own, but some of them will have multiple elements in. In that case, you need to just pick a single representative. So pick a single representative from each one of these equivalence classes and um, then put into a set all of these equivalence classes basically. So uh, we picked a representative from over here, let's say it's W, then we put in the equivalence class of W. We do not put in the equivalence class of any of the other elements in this set here now because we've picked a representative and we've got that equivalence class sorted now. That set is sorted, we've done that. And then we put in the equivalence class of X, uh, the equivalence class of Y, etc. So we get uh, a single element to represent each of these equivalence classes. We put them all into a set and we're now, uh, we now have this set of equivalence classes which cover our uh, original pseudo-metric space. And what we want to do is turn this set, view this set as our new x, and we want to turn it into a metric space. Turn it into a metric space. So we're constructing a new metric space from a pseudo-metric space. Turn it into a metric space. Okay, and the way we're going to do this is uh, that we are going to define the distance, well, we need to define the distance function is how we're going to define the metric space. So, the way we're going to define the distance between any two equivalence classes, so distance between, let's say, the equivalence class of x and the equivalence class of y, it's just going to be the pseudo-metric distance. So we're going to use the pseudo-metric on our original uh, set x bar, um, and you're just going to pick any representative you like of this equivalence class E of X. You might as well pick X, but you can pick any representative you like. And I'm going to prove to you that this is well defined. Um, you're going to pick any representative of this equivalence class, and you're going to pick any representative of this equivalence class. You might as well pick the representative you've labelled it with. Uh, and basically just work out what the distance between those two is. And it won't be equal to zero because they're in separate equivalence classes. If it was equal to zero, they'd be... Um, they'd be um, 
uh, well, if, if they'd be in the same equivalence class. Uh, of course, it's allowed to equal zero if you if they are the same equivalence class, uh, because that's going to be one of the axioms of a metric space that the distance between e of x and e of x should be equal to zero. Uh, but that's how we're going to define it. So let me draw my picture back again. So here's our original set x bar, and we've partitioned it up into these equivalence classes of elements that are a distance from each other zero. Okay, so here is x. And here is the equivalence class of y. So this whole set is the equivalence class of y, and this whole set is the equivalence class of x. And basically, I'm saying uh, we now have this new set over here, which consists of all these equivalence classes. So let's say this is uh, equivalence class 1, equivalence class 2. Then we, for some reason, uh, change our labeling and call this one equivalence class x, this equivalence class y. All of these equivalence classes, equivalence class 5, equivalence class 6. All of these sets are now in this new set, uh, which we're going to call X, and we're going to turn this into a metric space. And basically I'm saying if you take any two elements in here, so let's say distance, uh, we're just going to say arbitrarily distance between this equivalence class and this equivalence class, but it's arbitrary basically. You pick two equivalence classes in here and you want to know what is the distance between them. You go back into this one, you pick any two representatives of it, we've picked X and Y, you ask what is the pseudometric distance between them, that's going to be your answer basically. So I need to prove to you that this is well defined. Uh, and what does it mean? What do I mean well defined? I need to prove to you that it doesn't depend on which element you chose to pick. You might say, uh, I don't want to pick x, I want to pick another element up here, x prime, which is in this equivalence class. And I, you might say, I don't want to pick y, I want to pick another uh, an element up here, y prime. And I need to make sure that the distance between x prime and y prime, um, i.e. d bar x prime, y prime, the pseudometric distance between these two is exactly the same as the pseudometric difference distance between x and y. Otherwise, this answer that I get will depend on which representative I picked. So it's not even a unique map. I'm not even ascribing a unique number to this. So that's what I mean by well-defined. I want to ascribe a unique number to it. Okay, so I need to prove to you, therefore, that the distance between x and y is actually equal to the distance uh, between uh, d bar of x prime, y prime, where x prime is related to x and y prime is related to y. Okay, so let's do that then. Uh, so I, to show um, that uh, the distance, the pseudometric distance between x prime and y prime is equal to the pseudometric distance between x and y, if x prime is related to x and y prime is related to y. So if. Okay, so we'll start with these. What do these imply? This implies that the pseudometric distance between x prime and x is equal to zero. This one implies that the distant, di pseudometric distance between y prime and y is equal to zero. So that's just the definition of what it meant to be related to one another. Okay, so what we can now do is apply the triangle inequality here. So uh, let me get my pens back again, my coloured pen. Ah, oh, they're over there. Okay, so we're going to apply the triangle inequality uh, twice, basically, I think, in this um, proof. Uh, so it, we want this distance between x and y here, and we want to get it in terms of the distance between x prime and y prime. So, by the triangle inequality of the pseudometric space, we can say that the uh, that d prime of x uh, and y, is so the d prime of this distance here, the pseudometric distance between x and y, uh, by the triangle inequality, well, the generalized triangle inequality, it's less than or equal to the distance between x and x prime. Uh, so that corresponds, so let me just uh, color in this one. So that's the blue one. Uh, this one is going to correspond to, um, let me get my other pen, uh, this one here, this little distance here, so that corresponds to that bit there, plus the distance between x prime, d bar, the pseudometric distance these should have been, the pseudometric distance between x prime and y prime, uh, so that's that distance there between x prime and y prime, so let me get another pen, uh, this one here. And now I've run out of colours, I think. Oh, now I've got a yellow pen here. Let's hope it works. And the distance, and then plus, finally, the distance between y prime and y, uh, which is this distance here. So basically, I'm saying that the pseudometric distance between x and y should be less than if I go around this convoluted silly path here. Okay, so that's that bit there. 
yellow pen. Yellow is not a great colour for showing up. Um, but that's what I'm saying, basically. And then I apply these two results here to say that this is equal to zero, and this is equal to zero. So we get that the d bar of x and the d, the pseudometric distance between x and y, we now know is less than or equal to d bar uh, of x prime, y prime. Okay, so that's a start. We're halfway there. We've got less than or equal to. So if we could show the other way round, if we could show that d bar of x prime y prime is less than or equal to this one, then we'd have equality. Okay, so let's do that. So let's draw another picture. Uh, so back to this picture again. We have the equivalence class of x and the equivalence class of y here. So this is the equivalence class of x. This is the equivalence class of y. Here is the... Um, distance between x and y, Here is, oh, sorry, here's x and y, here's x prime, and here's y prime, okay? Uh, now what we want to do is apply the in triangle inequality in a different way. We instead want to apply it to, on this side, we want uh, the pseudometric distance, and that up there should have been the pseudometric distance. I do apologise if anywhere else I've missed out the bar. Uh, the pseudometric distance between x prime and y prime is going to be less than or equal to, so if I colour in, this one here, this distance here, this blue distance here, is going to be less than or equal to, if I go around this convoluted path here, so it's going to be less than or equal to uh, the distance, the pseudometric distance between x prime and x, uh, which is, um, let's get the pink pen out, um, this one here, okay, uh, plus uh, the pseudometric distance between x and y, um, pseudometric distance, uh, which is um, this one here. So basically, I'm just applying the triangle inequality the other way around. In this case up here, I said uh, the distance between here and here must be less than this distance. What I'm now doing is saying the distance between here and here must be less than this distance here. Okay, so we're doing that now. Uh, so uh, finally, you have to add on the distance between pseudometric distance between y and y prime, uh, which is... Uh, this bit here, which is this yellow bit here, okay? Uh, so uh, now what we do is apply the fact that this is equal to zero and this is equal to zero because these are in the uh, same equivalence class, and what we get is that the pseudometric distance between x prime and y prime must be less than or equal to the pseudometric distance between x and y. Uh, so if you apply both of these inequalities, the only way both of them can be true is if they're actually equal. So that implies that the distance between x and y, a pseudometric distance between x and y, is actually equal to the pseudometric distance between x prime and y prime. Okay, so that's why uh, this definition of the metric is well defined. Uh, so you're only ever going to ascribe one answer to the uh, metrical distance between two equivalence classes. Uh, in the next video, what we'll do is why it obeys uh, the axioms of a metric space.